with so much more. And I am live um, in my Kansas City studio. And today I'm going to be quilting my churn chain quilt. And I have it down here on my cutting table. I have to measure it and I also need to uh, cut the binding. So after I cut the binding, then I'm gonna sew the strips together and then I'll press it and then add it to my quilt. So this is a pretty large quilt, so I'm not sure if we're gonna do all of those things during this broadcast, but we're gonna, you know, walk through most of it. So let me back you up here just a little bit to kind of give you a view of my quilt. I have you on a stand, so it might be a little bit easier if you can look from back here. I have some various things on the design wall, but kind of, you know, they're, they're great for the season. So this is the fabric that I'm gonna be cutting to make into my binding. It is the same fabric as my background. And the, the quilt that I'm binding is a churn chain quilt. It's my new pattern that'll be released in just a couple weeks. And this is, I've just trimmed it. So it's got some Irish chains going and some churn dashes. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is measure the quilt. Right, this is, um, I think I made, I think I made the queen size of this one. It's like I said, quite large and my cat wants out of her little area. You need to get off the table, sweetie. Come on, you don't need to be on here. You wanna get off the table, please? No, this is not yours to inspect. Let me move her down from here. All right, time to come down. Let's say hello to everybody. This is Socks and she just wants to look out the window. So we're gonna put her down. She can go to the other side and look out the window. All right, so first we're gonna measure the quilt. I have my measuring tape. So this is, I'm trying to get my bearings. This is such a large quilt. Okay, here's the bottom, a large churn. I should have pinned those on, okay, I feel like that's the bottom. So I'm gonna measure this. I can look on my pattern to see how much binding I need, but I do like to measure. You know, things happen when you make a quilt. It might be bigger, it might be smaller, or it might just be right. Kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. All right, so this is, oh, I'd say 93. So remember that 93, I think is the width, right? By, This took up a majority of my long arm when I quilted it last week. 93 by, what did that be, 103. So 93 by 103, all right? So that is the measurement of this quilt. It's a big one. <clears throat> Let's see if I can even show you. I'm trying to get it right side up. <laughs> it's so large, so big. Let me go on this side where I can, I'm kind of like backed into the corner on this side. So let's move, let's move the camera to this side just so you can get a peek of this quilt. I'm gonna flip you around here to the other side of my studio. And I have a little bit more space here. So, let me see if I can find the right side. I think this is it. No, it's like, no, that's right. Okay. I can't even show you the whole thing. I have to go to a photo studio just to get a picture of the whole quilt because it's large. So anyway, 93 by 103. So we're gonna put it on my long arm for the time being. And then we're gonna flip back around. We're gonna cut this fabric. And let's turn around again. Now this is a smaller version. Uh, this is the full size I'm thinking. No, this is probably the throw size of this quilt, the churn chain. And so I had that recently um, showcased in a booth in QuiltCon. So 
All right, so let's go ahead and trim. We need to figure out. We're gonna do two and a half inch binding. It's gonna be stripe binding. I'm gonna open up an app that I use to calculate the binding. So quilt, I'm just doing a quick search. Okay, so it's quilting calculator. It's by Robert Kaufman. And basically what you do is you go into the binding section and you say, what is the width of the fabric? And I think this one is, I'm sure it's 44, right? Yes, it's 44. So the width is 44. Um, my binding strip, it's asking me how wide I want it. So I'm saying two and a half. And the dimensions of the quilt, the width is 93. The length is 103. And then I hit calculate. And I hit regular binding, not bias binding. That makes a difference. So it says I need 10 strips and three quarters of a yard, which I totally have. So we're going to cut 10 strips at three quarters of a yard. And <clears throat> let's see. It looks like this bolt has extra fabric on it. Like I may have married a bolt. Yeah, there it is. There's the end of it. Do I have a three quarters of a yard or is this the, the, I don't know. Let's just start cutting strips because I am gonna start on this side because my zero zero mark is right there on this side. So let me squeeze over there. I've gotta find my cutter, here's one. So when I cut yardage, especially off a bolt or if I'm doing large cuts, I'm using the true cut system. It has a groove on the ruler and it fits right on the edge of it. And so I don't have to worry about it slipping away. See, see it has a groove and the cutter fits right into that groove. So I use this for when I'm cutting large things like um, binding strips or lots of blocks and things like that. When I get into more fine tune cutting, then I'll choose maybe a different system. But for cutting binding, I love this. All right, so I'm going to line up my, do you need to come closer? I hope you can hear me okay. If not, let me know in the comments and I'll come take a peek back and make adjustments. So I'm just going to line this up with my zero, zero mark and a straight line at the bottom. Now this, this uh, cutting table is something that I've had that's actually been in the family for years. It belonged to my grandmother and my aunt, who um, is also a quilter, had it for a moment. And then she said that I would probably get more use out of it, which gosh knows I have. All right, so I'm just getting that first cut. And then I'm going to do 10 strips at two and a half. Let's see if my rotary blade is sharp enough. Yep, okay. So I'm going to do 10 strips here. Now, once I make these cuts, we're gonna fold up this cutting table and we're gonna move over to this area where my uh, sewing machine is. I have a couple different sewing machines in this room, but today we're gonna use my Juki Teal 2010Q. And that is a straight stitch only machine. And um, we're gonna put these binding strips together on the diagonal making sure I'm getting my cuts correct. We're gonna put them together on the diagonal and then we'll go over to the ironing station, open up those seams and then press our binding strips lengthwise, wrong sides together. All right, so 15, I'm just, I'm just making cuts at two and a half inch increments each. And I need 10 strips, right? So I should be doing like up to 20. Is that right? Or is it 22.5? Maybe it's 22.5. I think I need to do one more. Right? No, it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need two more. 9. I need 25. <clears throat> I need to go up to 25 because that's three quarters of a yard. All right. 
So 10 strips. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? Okay. Ten strips. I'm going to put them right back here next to my machine. I'm going to fold this guy up and move him out of the way. It's kind of a tight squeeze when I have my cutting table in this corner. I usually have it on the other side of the room, but I was needing it for that other space for something else. I'm always moving things around. All right. There we go. Look at all that room now. And I've got blocks on the floor. We're just going to set those over here for now. Okay. So let's come over here to the sewing machine. This is the TL2010Q. I'm going to move you down just a little bit so you can see what I'm working on. Let's see if I can do that, make adjustments. Okay, and then I need to get my chair over here. Okay. There is the machine. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna be sewing these together. So let me move some of these things out of the way. And I'm gonna get my chair over here. It looks like I need to rethread my machine as well. I had cut some thread just to do something else. I've got my slimline light over my table, which I love. It's, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning here in Kansas City, so this is a pretty bright spot in my studio. I don't need a whole lot of artificial lighting, but um, I do love that, light, that lamp. I hope that view's okay for you. All right, so I'm gonna thread this machine. I've got bobbin thread, and I have the wrong presser foot, so I'm gonna switch that out now, like I said, this is the TL2010Q, and it is a straight stitch machine. You've probably seen this machine be used by all sorts of other people. You may have one yourself. This is a semi-industrial machine, and it stitches 1,500 stitches per minute. It goes super fast. It has amazing uh, tension, and the stitches are... Have, I've, I've experienced perfect stitches every time. I've self-serviced my own machine for years and I've never had a problem. I just love it. Uh, there was one time where I had, um, whoops, where I had bent the needle threader because I didn't have the needle in the correct position. Like I think right now I don't have it in the correct position. So, um, so I had to switch that out. But, um, other than that, I haven't had any issues. Just love it. So if you guys have one of these machines, I'd love to hear. Oops, I got my thread twisted around. There we go. Let's try that again. Let's see if I might I might have a a needle that's too big. There we go. Nope. I'm gonna have to do this old school. Well, anyway, so this um this machine will be great. It's great for piecing. I love piecing on this machine. I also have a uh a DX4000, which I love piecing on as well. So this uh, machine, like I said, just has straight stitch and you can use it. It comes with a walking foot. Of course, you'll need a zipper foot if you need to make bags. You can really do a great job making bags with this machine too. It has a thread cutter, automatic needle threader. Now this table is an aftermarket product. This is a bigger table than what normally comes with this machine. And I'm gonna move my blinds because we're getting this weird um, effect. Let me flip it the other way. So maybe we don't have stripes so much. Okay, so this table is not the typical, um, let me show you what the table, it normally comes with, this is the table it normally comes with, right? It has its own extension table, um, but I did purchase an aftermarket table that's much larger, which I love. And then um, I also have a grid glider on top of this um, it's called a Versa table by So Steady. Anyway, it, uh, it's going to help me with my middle seam. And now the cat is back on the table. So if the table is moving, it's because she's 
making her way onto her little perch. Plus, I think I have like a, a balance issue with this table. I have to have my son look at that. All right, so I'm gonna use my regular presser foot. Right now I have my quarter inch foot, which is gonna be great when I put my binding on my quilt, but I need to just sew these binding strips together on the diagonal. So I'm gonna use my regular presser foot. I don't need my hinged quarter inch foot for that. So let me, let me move your view into a place where you can better see the needle because I'm gonna be doing some stitching that's going to be um, intentional that I'm, I just wanna show you how I use my grid glider so that I don't have to, um, you know, draw a line when I put my binding strips together. So hopefully you can see that view okay. So like I said, this is a grid glider. It's basically a sticker that you put on top of your extension table and it has a middle line that's aligned with the needle hole on my base plate. And so what I'm gonna be doing is when I put my binding strips together, I'm gonna to be using this middle line as an indicator of um, where I need to sew instead of actually drawing a line on everything. And this is also great for snowballing. So let me zoom you out a little bit just to kind of give you an understanding of the overall process. And then I'll zoom you in to show you um, what I mean by using that line. So I'm using solids, so they're the same on both sides. But if you were using a, um, oh, maybe a print where you have a wrong side and a right side, you'd put right side or right sides together. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be sewing a diagonal line here. And then when I flip it over, it'll be like one continuous strip. And again, I'm making my binding strips. So I've got my little selvage edge outside. And that's why it's kind of like overlapped. And then I'm gonna just maneuver these pieces. And so I've got this piece right here, this diagonal join right up here with in lined with my needle hole. And then um, this is my center line right here. And I've got the bottom of this joint aligned with that. So I'm gonna put my presser foot down and let's see, I've got it. So I'm just gonna sew that. All right, and now I'm using white threads that you can see, but I have my, my diagonal line right there. And then what I'll do is I'll take my scissors and I'll just trim this off. Let me grab those. I'm using my Kai, I think these are eight inch dressmaker scissors. There's, they're Kai 5210. So I'm just gonna come up here, cut that end off. Then I'm, I'm guesstimating a quarter of an inch. It's probably a little more or less, it's not perfect. We're gonna just press those seams open. So I'm just getting that extra out of the way. And then we'll go back and press those seams open. But, so there's that first join, okay? So then I'm just going to keep my fabric aligned. So this is the right side of my fabric, if it was printed. And then if this was printed, this would be the right side of my fabric. And so I'm just gonna keep doing this. And this is how you join your, your binding strips together. Now, if I don't have a grid glider, I'd be taking a ruler and I'd be marking this line and then I would come back and I would sew the line. So this grid glider helps me alleviate, alleviate that extra step of marking. But, um, you know, you can totally, that's what I used to do before I had a grid glider. So again, I'm just gonna trim off the excess. See? It's a nice, even, um, you know, you really can't tell that I've, that it's two different pieces. And so we're gonna continue this. I have eight more strips to put on there. So hopefully that's a, a good enough view here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna zoom this in so that you can see that a little more clearly on the line that I was talking about. All right, so my needle hole right underneath here is gonna meet up with this piece right here, this where this joins together. So I've got that there. And then this line on my grid glider 
is going to meet up where these two pieces join right here. And so I'm just going to sew a little bit, do some back tacking, and then I'm going to keep this aligned as I move forward. So I'm just looking right here. I'm not looking here. I'm looking right here and keeping that in, in the crosshairs, if you will. And then um, that simple, this simple little um, inexpensive tool really helps me uh, save time from having to mark everything before I sew it. See? Just like that. Now, um, uh, one of the questions that I get asked a lot with the uh, grid glider system is, um, well, there's, there's a, a couple questions that I get asked a lot. And one of the questions, and it's a really good one, is how do I access my bobbin, right? Because obviously it's covering everything up because not only does it give you the seam allowance markings, but it also creates a nice slick surface for free motion quilting, right? The only thing that has opening here is right here where the feed dogs are. You can use this for free motion quilting also, but back to the question of um, accessing your bobbin. So um, it's super easy to do that. Let me just make sure that I have my uh, fabric facing in the right direction. So let me, okay, you can see. See how this is just a sticker? This is just a sticker, it's sticky. I've had this particular grid glider for over a year, almost, I, I think it's a year and a half. I've got scratch marks on it. Um, you know, some of the teal colors chipping off because this is a high use area. I pull this back. And so the Juki 2010Q has, it doesn't have a drop-in binding uh, bobbin, but if it did, you could just access it, lift it out, change out your bobbin. This machine has the side loading, right? And so I can access it easily. See, I'm just reaching in there, accessing it easily. And so it's not that you can't access it. It's just that you just have to pick up the sticker. And if you um, sew a lot like I do, a lot of times, you know, our thread makes lint. And so, you know, these, these things are stickers, right? And they stick on, t I'm just trying to make sure that I have this pointing in the right direction. These grid gliders are stickers. And so they stick on top of your extension table. And some of us have um, extension tables that are acrylic, like the one that I have on here. Some of them are the, like the smooth plastic that, you know, I was, if you were here earlier, you could see that um, this machine comes with a, oh, where did I put it? It comes with its own extension table. It's not acrylic, but it's this, you know, this smooth plastic. And so those, those things, those type of extension tables, those, uh, this grid glider sticks on really well. So some things that like, if you don't have an extension table, a lot of our uh, maybe our beginning machines or uh, basic models, those don't come with extension tables sometimes. So, you know, if you don't have an extension table, the grid glider is really not going to help you because it needs to stick on something, right? It has to uh, lay on top, on top of this and stick on it. Um, if you sometimes, our machines have extension tables that are maybe curved or bent down a little bit, like I've seen some, I'm not sure what brands or models, but I've seen some where they curve down. They're not completely flat. And while those are great extension tables for those machines, they're not a good candidate for a grid glider. And then some people also have their, maybe their table, maybe they, maybe they cut out their table to fit their, their base exactly. And the rest of their, you know, table is wood. So again, this is a sticker that will reposition itself. And so maybe wood is not always the best thing to stick it on. So I, I you know, recommend something that's smooth plastic. Um, and when I say smooth, I'm not talking about the, like the bubbly plastic, because if you have a bunch of air in between where it's sticking, then again, that's not good. But for the most part, most of us have an acrylic, uh, a, an acrylic extension table or one of those plastic extension tables. And these grid gliders, they come in a couple different sizes. So this one is the large size of the, the, the grid glider. And then you can get a smaller one 
that isn't as wide. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. And so um, I'll link in the description of this video when we're finished the different sizes and the differences. And so you can measure your own machine to determine, you know, if it, what's best for you, if you want to. <coughs> Excuse me. But you, you don't have to have a great lighter to do this. Uh, again, I just use it so that I don't have to uh, mark my sewing line before I sew it. Now they have also some other products that are on the market where you can, um, you know, put down like maybe like a masking tape or a special, almost like a, a washi tape that has some special lines on it. And those are great. Um, but those, you know, you have to replace that all the time. That's why they sell it in a roll because it doesn't stick. You know, it's not, not that this sticker is permanent, but like I said, I've had this particular one for like over a year, you know, and it's just been a really handy thing to have. All right, so we just have a few more strips to sew together, and then we'll go over to the ironing board. Let's see. I've got a little pile going here. I just don't know what's connected and what's not. This is not connected. These are all connected. Did I do them all already? Wow, that went quick. See what happens when you're having fun? All right, so this is the last one. That's quick. So once we uh, get these pieces sewn together, we're gonna go back over to the ironing board. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's zoom out here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually, I have you on a phone stand right now. I'm gonna gather up this binding and I'm gonna take it over to the ironing board and then I'm gonna come back and get you. So this is, I'm heading this way. So I'm gonna go over here. I gotta plug my iron in too. Plug this in. I'm gonna come get you and I'm gonna move you. We're gonna go to the other side of the room. See if I can do this without disconnecting. Okay, so we're gonna move over to the other side of the room. And I'm, I have another stand on this side and we're just gonna press these seams open and we're gonna press our binding, okay? So let's move, I'm sorry for all the adjustments. There we go. All right, so on this side of the room, I plugged my iron in. I have an Aliso iron, and um, these come in different colors, <clears throat> but this is the, I think it's aqua. And if, you've not, if you're not familiar with these, they are, they have eye, tech, eye touch technology where you don't have to have, you know, your iron standing up like this. It's constantly on, but it has the eye tech touch technology where when I touch it or grab it, it knows that it's in use, and so it lowers. Now, I've got it on high. It's heating up. It does take um, water. It has really good steam, and then I'm just going to fill this up, and it does not take distilled water. It, it likes tap water, so we're going to use that. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to fill that up. So all you do is you open up this, this little water reservoir lid right here, and you just fill it up from water from the tap. They, they actually don't want you to use distilled water. So it has like a anti-calcification system. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it, it does not spew out calcium. It, it stays nice and clean, even with the regular tap water. All right, so now, now it's nice and warm. It's getting ready. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to have my binding hanging off to the side. I'm going to press. So see, I've got this seam right here. I need to press that open, but at the same time, I'm going to be pressing 
my binding lengthwise together. So if this was a printed fabric, this would be the wrong side because the seam's there. And then, so I'm gonna be pressing these seams open and I'm also gonna be pressing them together to get them ready for binding. So let me move my guy out of the way. See if I can do a lot of this at a time. I like to make a quick job of this. So first I'm gonna press this open. I feel like I need to be coming from the other direction. Let me move everything to the other direction maybe. <clears throat> yeah, that's gonna be better. Okay, so then I'm just gonna be taking my, uh, my, bind my binding and I'm gonna be pressing it towards in and of itself, but I'm gonna also hit it with some starch because this is a lot of binding. And sometimes when you iron things, even though you've pressed it, it maintains that middle crease, but it doesn't stay. So I'm gonna starch it. <coughs> I'm gonna use, this is like a mini, miniature, like this is a magic spray, and it's just basically a quilting and crafting spray. It's a synthetic starch where it doesn't have like the um, organic stuff where, I don't know, you don't want organic stuff on your quilts because if you do store your quilts and you have like, you know, starches, the natural starch is made from potatoes. And I don't know about you, but when you store your quilts, you certainly don't want like natural food additives on your fabrics because our little furry friends that like to find warm little cozy places will be more addicted and drawn to natural, you know, something that smells like food than they will these synthetic things. So, all right, so I'm just moving things along. And I've got this pressed. I'm just gonna continue pressing this. I'm gonna do this for all of, I probably have, what do I have? 440 inches of binding. Said that I needed 10 strips. It's probably less than that because when I put my binding strips together, I lose about, I lose about two inches on each end. So whatever that math is. So when I come up to a seam, a joining seam, then I like to uh, press that open. Get my starch on here. Now they have this starch available in lots of different ways. They have like a little bottle, <clears throat> like I'm showing you. They have an aerosol um, can. They have a large trigger spray pump. And then they even have like a mister bottle. You know what I'm talking about where it's like a continuous mist? It's almost like faux aerosol. It's a continuous mist. But see how nice and flat that stays when I'm using the, the starch? I really like that. It's not required, but I've just found a lot of success with it, so I use it. All right. Now I'm coming up to a seam. I'm going to go ahead and press that open. My goal is to get this bound today and then um, I also need to work on a t-shirt quilt you know it's graduation season so I do that on occasion uh, custom orders but uh, I'm excited to have this churn chain pattern being released to the public soon my quilt block club members already have access to that. They are um, contemplating their fabric choices. This is the pattern that I'm talking about. It's churn chain. It has a large churn dash, lots of churn dashes, plus Irish chain mixed in together. It's a lot of fun, and we're going to be having a, um, a really fun challenge coming up soon called Churn Challenge where we're gonna learn all sorts of things about how to be a master at making the churn dash quilt block. This is probably one of my favorite quilt blocks. I have so many favorites, but I have loved this one for a very long time. There's so many things you can do with the churn dash quilt block. Um, and so we're gonna like kind of do a deep dive into that. We're gonna be, we're gonna be learning all about that. So um, when I'm done with our live segment here, I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can learn more about participating in that challenge. It'll be a free challenge. I'll give you a 
free pattern to make your own churn dash quilt block. And um, by the time we're done with this challenge, you guys are gonna be amazing at this. All right. <clears throat> this goes pretty quick. I wasn't sure what color of binding I was gonna use on this quilt, but um, I really wanted the quilt to pop and not so much the binding. So I chose the same fabric as the background when I decided what color and style of binding that I was gonna do. And I'm, I think it's gonna be a pretty good choice. The, the quilt itself is, I, if I do say so myself, it's fantastic. It is kind of big, but I wanted, I actually wanted to put this quilt on our bed, right? And um, we have a queen size bed, so this is gonna be a great quilt to um, have on our bed this summer. I did some quilting on the quilt with variegated thread, which I don't normally do, but it was rainbow variegated. And the quilt itself lends to a lot of fun, uh, like a spectrum of colors, kind of Roy G. Biv, but um, they're in like a pastel hue. So they're not super bright. They're kind of muted, if you will but it's just gonna be super fun to, I can't wait to show it to my friends and to have you guys see it once I get to a place where I can actually get a picture of the whole quilt. Like I said, it's so big. I like big quilts. I like small ones too. I just finished a baby quilt. I was at QuiltCon in Atlanta um, over the last weekend and showcasing some techniques, doing some demonstrating in the Juki booth and I finished quilting my Modern Love baby quilt and putting on the binding and things like that. So it's always a good time. All right, I had to open up that seam. I've got one other seam besides that one. So we're just about finished ironing our binding here. I was actually en route to Atlanta on an airplane last week at this time on this very day and so I was sad to miss our lives uh, because I'm always, I shouldn't say always, but my goal is to go live every, every week on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central. So if you're here, I'm glad that you're joining me live and it's always fun to watch the replays as well because I do save them. All right, here we go. This is our last seam to press open. Ooh, that's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Lots of binding for a big quilt. Kind of feel like this isn't enough binding. I always make too much though. So I love that, that um, app that I used to figure out how much binding I needed. Now obviously on my pattern on the last pages, I tell you exactly how much binding you need, but I'm a creature of habit with that. I like to look at the app and let's just double check. Let's double check, shall we? It said, hang on, there's so many exploded views. <clears throat> there's the binding. Well, my pattern says I need 11 strips. So let's see, and I always like to give you a little bit extra in case you need it. So we'll see if I need it. Yeah, see my, I, my, fat, my, my quilt should have me measured 92 by 104 and I measured 93 by 103. So we'll see, we shall see. I do have more fabric if I need to add more binding. So now I kind of want to do that. I'm second guessing. All right, that is done. So now we're gonna go back over to our sewing machine and put our binding on. So let me just place you over here. See that big ring light? We're going to go over there. Let me pick up this binding. I'm going to put this over there to get ready for this. <clears throat> All 
All right. I gotta get my quilt over there too. Where's the bottom? Here's the bottom. I know this is the bottom because the churn dash in the design is towards the bottom. See, here's the quilt. Maybe you can see it better here. It's very large. Did I mention that? The smaller version is right there on the wall behind it, but this is the queen size version. See that large churn? I love it. All right, so this is the bottom. I'm gonna start the bottom first with the binding and then we'll go all the way around. So let me get this over to my machine and then I'll come back and get you. move over to the other camera okay so hopefully I can do this without killing the the feed okay so let's go back over to the other side of the sewing room sorry if I'm going too fast I don't want to make you um, nauseous like that all right we're gonna plug it into this stand There we go, okay. So I'm, I'm tucked away into this corner over here, which could get in the way, you know. I've got a lot of quilt going on, and it's all gonna be jammed up over here in the corner. I think that we'll be okay though. We've got <laughs> the middle going right here, and I'm just gonna start with this side of the, uh, binding strips. Now, the foot that I have on here is just a regular presser foot. I'm gonna use my quarter inch presser foot so that I can make sure, because I wanna maintain a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna attach it to the front, and then when I flip it over, it's gonna be attached to the back. Okay, this is a quarter inch presser foot right here. See, it has like a little hinge on it too. Can you see that hinge? Yeah. So that helps me. Um, and also my grid glider has a line on it for a quarter of an inch. So I've got a couple things going for me in my favor to help me maintain my quarter inch seam allowance. Not that I'm piecing anything right now, but I don't wanna make it too, I'd like to have my binding kind of even, you know. Not aiming for perfection, but um, Anything that I can do to make it better, I'm going to try. I got to get my screwdriver in to strengthen that. There we go. Now that foot's not going to move or drop off. Okay. So, now I'm not going to change any thread. Right now I'm using white thread. I should probably use a darker thread, but this is going to be fine because I'm just going to be sewing this down and then I'm going to be flipping that over. But when I, when I flip it over and sew it down to the other side, I'm going to be using a thread that matches. Not that I see one handy, so I'm going to have to get inventive with that. All right, so I'm going to give, I'm going to leave myself about, what is that, six inches of tail before I start. Because I'm going to need some of that to join those ends when I get to that point. So, needle down. And I'm going to give myself a lot of wiggle room here. All right. Now, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm just going to zoom you in to where this is all happening. Now, this, hopefully, this is not in the way. This is my, um, my slim line, and it gives me some really good light, so I just, I have that over my sewing machine here. All right. I'm not going to make a knot because I'll probably pick some of those stitches out. So all the raw edges are together. I've trimmed my quilt, and now it's just time to attach the binding. Now, like I said, this grid glider has lines. My quarter inch is right here, okay? So I'm keeping, I'm keeping that in mind. And my quarter inch is on this hinged foot here too. Or on my, I guess it has a guide. Now, 
I don't have this all the way down to the floor, like it's not pedal to the metal, but it's fast enough. And when I get to the edge here, I'm gonna do some things that'll make it look like it's a mitered corner. So hopefully you have a good view. I'm giving myself, there I'm about a quarter inch away. So I'm gonna leave my needle in the down position and I'm gonna rotate. Right, my needle's still in the down position, holding everything. I'm gonna br bring my needle up. I still have thread there, right? The thread is still connected. I'm giving myself a mitered corner there. Hopefully you can see. See, I'm, I'm mitering up to the corner, giving myself a diagonal fold. And then at the top of that, I'm folding down. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna take this thread and I'm gonna keep it attached. Normally I have a stiletto over here, but I have an old needle. So I'm just gonna take that thread and I'm gonna pull that to the back. Everything's still connected. I'm put my presser foot down and I'm gonna give myself some reinforcing stitches right there. I'm gonna sew down a little bit and then I'm gonna adjust my quilt. All right, now I'm, I'm ending with the needle in the down position. So everything stays put. And now I'm just readjusting my quilt. You know how these things can get kind of cumbersome, but I'm readjusting it. So I'm just making sure that, you know, what I'm about to sew is either in front of me or on my lap. I don't want it to have any bends or folds. So isn't that quilting pretty? I just love it so much. All right, we're gonna zoom in again. All right, let's zoom in. Can you see okay? I'm trying to get rid of that. I have a little chat thing. I don't wanna see that. Okay, hopefully that's a good view. There we go. All right. Now, I especially love it when I'm putting on binding and my the place on my binding where my seams come together, like right here is where those two pieces of binding came together. I especially love it when it does not happen on a corner because that's not fun. Just making sure everything's nice and flat. I'm not pulling on this, right? You don't want to pull the... The binding when you're you just want to lay it on top where it's not taunt or anything because then you'll have your quilt curling if you pull on your binding before you sew it on <laughs> giving myself plenty of, of extra room here i'm just laying it on top not pulling Now my, my stitch length on here is about 2.1. I don't know exactly because this is not a computerized machine. This is a semi-industrial straight stitch machine. So it doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, but what it lacks with um, automation, it picks up for um, in speed and accuracy and the beautiful tension that all of the stitches have. So I'm loving how fast it goes. Isn't that a fun churn dash right there? I love it. Especially when you have two colors that are so contrasting. There's a lot of contrast going on right there. I think it's amazing.
really kind of, a, we're, we're on the length part, not the width of the quilt. So again, this, this quilt is like 103, 104 inches. <laughs> There's a lot of quilt backed up here on the back of this machine. It's kind of getting crowded back there. Now I'm coming to the edge of this before I make my turn. I'm going to stop where I'm a quarter inch away from the edge. And my little, my little guide foot's going to tell me when that is. About right there. So I leave my needle in the down position. Raise my presser foot. Kind of get myself in this 90 degree area here and then i'm going to lift my needle up pull things back my thread still connected give myself a mitered fold and then fold down again and then i'm going to take my thread that's still connected and pull that back i'm just using like a straight pen to do that i'm going to give myself some stitches to keep that set i'm going to i'm going to sew just a little bit down here further before i um, reposition all of my quilt bulk here. There we go. Now I'm going to reposition everything. Kind of turn. Now I'm on the top side of my quilt. So I'm just, here's the other corner. Let me move you back here. You can't really see. So here's, here's the top side of my quilt. This is what I'm quilting. So this is about 10 inches shorter than the length. Now you see this big stitch right here. This is my basting stitch. I'll be taking that out either before I do my final binding or right after, probably after. All right, I've got things repositioned. This is out of the way. <coughs> so now I'm just gonna keep quilt, um, sewing my binding onto my quilt. Let me zoom you in again. There we go. Remember, we're not pulling, we're not pulling it tight because this will stretch, this binding, even though it's straight, straight binding, you know, there is some given cotton. You just don't want to stretch that binding when you're sewing it onto your quilt because that will make for, um, the edges will roll up if you do that. Ask me how I know. Now I'm thinking that I might have to go to my fabric shop to get a new spool of thread because I don't have a thread. that's gonna match this, but I might, so the, I might, I don't know, we'll have to see what I find. I have a dark gray that might be adequate, and it's not like this is gonna go into some jurd show or anything like that, so maybe I just need to get over myself, right? It would be nice to have a thread that matches exactly though, so we'll see. I'm looking up at my, my, th my, thread collection which is just above this machine and nothing's really striking my fancy which is really funny because blue is one of my favorite colors and I really don't have a very big selection of blue thread and that's probably because um, I do more piecing than quilting and the thread I use for piecing is you know usually boring and all the same. It's just Aurifil Dove 50 weight, 2600. <clears throat> Making sure I'm still gonna have bobbin. This machine does not have a, you know, bobbin low indicator. Like I said, it's a semi-industrial. It does not computerized or anything like that, so. Sometimes I found myself sewing nothing at all, sewing air. So sometimes I just have to check, right? Just gotta check. Okay, 
done with the top of the quilt. We're gonna stop here a quarter inch from the edge. All right, needle in a down position, press her foot up. I'm gonna turn. Lift up that needle, give myself an a angled fold here to give myself that mitered corner and fold it back down, matching the top of that quilt. There we go. I'll take a straight pin and pull that thread back behind. Just get it out of the way. Some reinforcing stitches and a few for good measure before I reposition the entire quilt. All right, needles in the down position, and now I'm going to reposition the reposition this quilt. Now we're we're almost on the home stretch here. We've got one more long side to do. Remember, this is a queen size quilt, so and I'm doing good on binding. And we'll see if I needed 10 strips or 11. Okay, so let me just kind of lift up and manhandle this guy. Okay, there we go. Manageable. All right. Now remember, we're not pulling the binding, we're just laying it on top. Let me zoom you in. See this thread right here? I still need to bury some threads. So I have some I have some quilt maintenance to take care of after I get the binding done, and that's okay. I might even bind this by hand, we'll see. I always say that, but then I never do. But I'm keeping this quilt, so maybe I'll do that because I do love hand binding. What about you guys? Do you like machine binding or hand binding? I like If I have time, I love to hand bind. And then if I did that, I would definitely need to get the right thread. So we'll see. This is the big quilt. I still have plenty of binding. I'm doing good. Feeling confident about the 10 strips instead of 11. <laughs> but it might be close. And there's comfort in having a little extra too. Again, I need to bury these threads right here. I'll come and do through I'll come and do quilt maintenance after I do the binding, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's what I'll do. <laughs> Gotta bury threads. Gotta trim threads. I have basting stitches that I need to take out. I used the long arm to quilt this machine and I did some basting stitches before I, you know, did the edge to edge quilting. And so I tried to take them out along the way, but it didn't happen for all of the quilt. For most of it, it did though. All right, the last corner. Oh, look, I'm on a, I'm on a seam. That's the corner. That's my least favorite part, but we're gonna make it work because we're almost done with this quilt. come a quarter inch away from the edge. Needle in the down position, pivot 
needle up and give myself that angle that's 45 degrees and then 90 degree fold so first a 45 degree fold then a 90 degree fold it actually didn't work out too bad see there's my seam so manageable at least it didn't happen right on that mitered corner fold because that's always weird okay we're going to give us a little bit of stitches here to get us going now, this is the side where our two sides will adjoin where they will align and so let's find where that is this is our last side we're on the home stretch so this is this is where we're going to end right so i want to leave myself about that much room i want to leave myself about that much room you can see that i think that's about i don't know 10 inches i'm going to put like a, a sewing pin where I want to stop. Because when I put these sides together, I, I like to give myself a little bit of a room. So not too much more here. And then we're gonna join these binding strips together. have plenty of binding because like my next my next seam is right here I hope it doesn't match up where I have to put these two together gosh where's my needle all the way down here I think I'm gonna get past it yep I'm gonna get past it Ooh, this is a close one I'm I'm just I'm just I just have enough <laughs> I probably will have just a little bit left so I like the fact that I gave um, the folks that buy this pattern enough wiggle room because this is kind of cutting it close that that app was right on the money but it doesn't give much grace Okay, here's my pen. I'm coming up towards my pen. So I'm gonna stop at the pen and then we're going to uh, talk through joining this. All right, there's my pen. I'm just gonna cut the thread, okay? I'm not gonna give a back tack or anything like that. But look, I have enough and there is the end, right? I have just enough, gosh. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out and now we're gonna talk about joining these pieces, right? I've got, I've got this much on this side and I've got more than enough on this side. So what I wanna do is I wanna join these two together. So I'm gonna just, I know I have way more than I need on this side, so I'm gonna whack off a little bit here on the end. And so this right here is the measurement I need, the width of this, not the length that I just cut off, but the width, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to cut off this selvage end right here, give myself a nice clean straight cut, and then I'm going to bring this, the rest of this right up to that point, okay? And they're meeting like side by side. There's no overlap. So I'm gonna measure from that meeting point two and a half inches up. And so this is my width, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure two and a half inches up, and this is where I cut it off, right? At the top of that measurement. It's hard to see because this is the same color of fabric, but I'm gonna give myself a little, hang on, I wanna make sure this is right because I don't wanna have not enough or too much. So here's that fold where they meet together, measuring two and a half inches up, and then I'm gonna cut the excess off and give my little self a nick where I've made my cut and then I'm just gonna cut the rest off. All right, so this is all that I had left of that uh, binding. So yeah, Whew, that was a close one. So now I have these two pieces that I need to join together just like when we were joining the binding strips together. So the first thing I need to do is get this excess out of the way. I'm gonna fold this excess out of the way I'm gonna use some clips 
and just get that bulk out of my way. If you don't have clips, then you can use pins. My clips are on the other side of the room, so I'm gonna use pins and hope to God I don't poke myself. There's nothing worse, right? So there, I pinned that out of the way. Hopefully this is a good view for you. All right, so now I have these two pieces that I need to join together. Let me see, I have, you guys are gonna laugh at me, but I have this picture that I took probably seven years ago of me doing this very thing. And I, look how beat up, it's ripped, it's taped. It looks like someone had it for a sandwich. I have this piece of paper next to me. So whenever I join my pieces together, I look at that and say, am I doing it right? Because a lot of times I do solids and I'm like, "Is it, are these the right sides together? So I'm just gonna put this right over here. I'm gonna look at it and kind of copy my little picture, but I'll show you at the same time. So here's this piece. I'm gonna open it up like this. Okay, see it's, it's sewn there, it's opened like this. Then the other side, and I know I have a lot of extra space, is like this. Okay, and I'm aligning these up to that corner, to that corner, and everything is aligned. There's no overlap, right? And I'm going to sew it from this end to this end, I think. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. So I'm gonna pin it there, and I'm gonna pin it here, and because there's no overlap, it's hard to see right back here where this begins because it's kind of hidden, right? That's where that begins. So I am going to, do I have a, I don't have anything to write with. Well, we're going to make this work without writing or marking. Now I have, I need more room over here, okay? It, like I need to put this nice and flat, but I feel like it's really tugging right here. So I'm just gonna flatten that down, find this point. Let me, let me zoom you in, okay? There we go. So there's that point that I needs to match my, my needle hole. So I'm gonna remember that point and it's matched up with that. It's right there. So I'm gonna move that needle out of the way, but I just wanted to position it first. And then this position needs to come down here on the other side of my grid glider. Now, if you don't have a grid glider, just take, like in this case, you'd need to take a white chalk pen because you couldn't see black on this dark blue, but you're gonna do that. So I hopefully I'm doing this right. And my hinge foot's on there, so it's kind of getting in the way. I should have changed my foot, but you know, I'm so excited to finish that I just am not doing that. All right, let's see how this works. I'm gonna take those pins out. See, I'm gonna trim that excess away, but before I trim the excess away, I'm going to take out my pin that's bunching up this fabric and make sure that everything is laying flat. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm just now reading your comment about this is your favorite part. Yeah, I like, this is, the finishing is so fun. It's such a gratifying step. Okay, so I, I unpinned that extra fabric. Now I'm laying it out to make sure that I have enough, and I don't have too much, it's laying nice and flat. I could probably make it a little bit tighter, you know, cause there's a little more wiggle room, but I think I'm gonna stretch the quilt just to make it work, cause I think we're good, okay? So now I'm gonna come up next to my seam that I just made, and it's obvious because I made it with this white thread, and I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away from that seam just to get rid of this excess fabric. Now, if you have a seam roller or like a little mini iron next to your machine, you're gonna wanna open this seam and press it. My seam roller is right over there. So we're gonna finger press it, and it's gonna be fine. Because we're gonna flip it over, and there we are, and we're gonna sew it down. All right, so this is gonna be our last stitches. I'm just gonna put some pins in here because it's a little, my binding is just a little bit bigger than my quilt. So I'm gonna to try to even it out without stretching it too much. And my pins are gonna help me because I don't want it to be all bunched up at the very end when, the, when I put my last stitches in. 
You know what I mean? Because you can pull it and then you'd have this whole big bubble down here at the end. So I'm just going to even out the, uh, there's like a, a touch of excess there. So now it's kind of like evenly distributed. So it won't be noticeable at the end. All right, I'm lining up my stitches where we're, from where I left off. I'm gonna back stitch. This is the home stretch. It is bunching up a little bit. Oops, I'm off of my quarter inch game. Hang on. There we go. Now what we're going to do is, um, I still haven't decided if I'm going to be hand binding or, um, I feel like I should hand bind this because this is, this quilt is going to stay with me. I'm going to put it on our bed and I really like how hand binding turns out. So, um, I was looking at my thread and really the only pieces that I, the only threads that I have that are even the closest color is this one. And this is like a really like, would be great for my shirt, but see, this is more of a Navy. So I don't, I'm not feeling that. And, and it's like a 40 weight. I need a thinner thread. So maybe this is a 50 weight. This might be a little closer, but it's still, I don't know. I'm probably making too much of a deal out of this. I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be my better choice. So we'll just have to see. I'm going to be, um, before I do anything, I am going to press the binding away, right? I'm going to press it away. And then we'll just fold it over and bind it. That might not be too bad. Yeah, it's just, I might have to go to my local quilt shop and shop their Aurifil colors because I do like binding with Aurifil. So, more to come. So anyway, thanks you guys for hanging out with me today on our live uh, feed. And if you're watching the replay, you know, let me know if you have any questions or if you need additional resources on what I just did. Um, I'm going to update the description of this video and I hope to see you back here. Um, subscribe if you, you don't already. I'll be back here on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. So I'll see you soon.